The story of shadow has um, many roots, many sources. Um, the first story I heard, the, the story that made me write it, um, is a true story of a, an Australian black Labrador uh, being used as a sniffer dog by the Australian army in Afghanistan, I believe about four years ago. And here's what happened to that dog. They were out on patrol, some Australian soldiers, about 20 of them, with this dog. And the dog was sniffing the side of the road to search out bombs, and they were walking along this little road, this little track. And suddenly, there was an ambush. The Taliban caught them in an ambush, and there was lots of shooting and lots of shooting, and there was Australian soldiers wounded and very heroic rescues. It was an action, I believe, in which a Victoria Cross was awarded afterwards, which is the highest award for bravery that there is. Anyway, when the firefight was all over, when the battle was over, they looked around for this dog, this sniffer dog, and he was nowhere to be seen. So they looked a little harder and searched and searched and called and called. There was no body. The dog had disappeared. Now, the Australians knew perfectly well that the Taliban target these dogs because they're so valuable. They save the lives of lots and lots of soldiers because they sniff out the bombs before the soldiers trigger them and trip them. And uh, they are known to shoot the dogs. And so they presumed that the Taliban had shot the dog and the body had been taken away. End of story. They were very sad, um, upset, because they loved this dog. All the soldiers really loved this dog because he was such a hero for them. Fourteen months later, over a year, this black Labrador walks out of the desert and introduces himself to another patrol of soldiers, saying, here I am. And so all that time, this Labrador had been out in the desert. No one knew how he survived at all. And I thought that was rather miraculous and rather wonderful. And then I'm thinking, hang on, hang on. To survive on your own would be quite impossible. He would have needed a friend to survive. Who might that friend be? An Afghan child of one sort or another who took to this dog, befriended this dog, and the dog befriended him. And so that's the way I, I started telling the story in my head. And I do this dream time when I tell a story. Um, and that was the beginning of it and the beginning of it. And I knew where the home of the Afghan family was to be because I'd seen a wonderful film um, about a place called Bamiyan in the north of Afghanistan where the Taliban blew up a huge statue of the Buddha against a cliff face, very famous. And the people, uh, because their houses were also blown up too, were living in caves. And so the dog lives with his family. And then it's the story really of the family and I'm getting all the family together and doing some research into that. And then I'm thinking, well, that's not enough. I don't just want a story about a dog and a boy and the war. Let's weave something else into it. And the other main root of it is this. I had heard, because I saw a play about this in London called Motherland. Um, and in Motherland, it's a story of children who have been shut up in a prison in England. Think about that. They've done no crime at all but they're shut up in a prison in this country. It's a place called Jarl's Wood. And these are asylum seekers who have been um, refused um, to stay on. Their appeals have been turned down, and they're about to be sent back, most of them, not all of them, most of them are going to be sent back to the, the countries that they came from in the first place. And what I learned, which saddened me and angered me, was that the immigration people and the police come for them in the early hours of the morning and they take them away in a van and they put them in this prison and they can stay out there for about two, in this prison for about two months or so. And I'm thinking, prison? Children? Do we lock children up in prisons in this country? I didn't think so. But I went to see it. And I wasn't allowed in. And I made a television program for it for the BBC about what was going on inside this prison. And how horrific it was for these children to be locked up, taken away from their homes, taken away from their friends, from their schools. Some of them have been in this country for years and years and years. And those two things, suddenly I thought I could weave together the story of the Afghan boy and the dog. And then maybe his family could come to England and they could live in England. And the story would unfold in this country um, with the dog and the boy and an English boy um, and his grandfather. So the story, in fact, of Shadow is told by three separate voices. Um,
because I felt that the characters were so important in the story that they must tell their own story. So that's the way it works. It's kind of complicated, but it's not complicated.